Hello everyone and welcome back to the Gloucester Channel. I am here today with a familiar face, Janine House. We did several interviews a few months ago for the Gloucester Channel. She's back here with us today. How are you doing today, Janine? Good, good, eventually. <laughs> I'm very happy to see you again, but I must say we are living in a brave new world. We are in uncharted territories. There is a lot of uncertainty or uncertainty around. There's, there's a, a very strange vibe in the air times are different, no one has ever really experienced anything like what's going on at the moment. And I'm not just talking about locally, I'm talking about worldwide, as I'm sure you know. Now, as I said, we are living in some very strange times, and you're here to speak to us today about a transition of time. And I was wondering if you could give us a few more details of what this is exactly about. I can see you put up some detailed notes on a whiteboard there. Perhaps you could lead us through what is happening at the current time. Yeah, sure, Robert. Um what I'm hoping to offer people today is a bit of an orientation to the idea of time. Um, so we don't get a lot of an orientation in our media and in the educational system, everywhere in our culture. And um, now that um, ID 2020 has come and gone and we're living in this crazy new world, upside down world, um, everybody's wanting to uh, get a handle on understanding what has happened and what is coming and um, I'm here to sort of help explain that and hopefully help to orientate people to what's going on so um, we've got a lot that we can cover um, I have had nearly 35 years um, experience in studying prophecy um, but also in studying um, the powers the geopolitical powers and it just so happens that my research dovetailed into explaining what happened in um, 2020 and in fact I had a warning about that based on this historical template that I've got here on the board and based on that that and my connection with God, God actually called me um, to give this message and he was telling me to go and warn people in 2019 um, that this attack was coming and I had an experience where I I had many, many amazing experiences in 2019, including meeting the Chief of Staff of the White House and sitting down and explaining this repeating code to him and um, giving him an idea of what was coming and he said he would alert the intelligence agencies. So um, that's what I'm hoping to do today is just to give people an orientation to time, an orientation to the codes, an orientation to the power that has just um, transitioned. So we are under a new power and I'm going to explain what's going on. However, um, the good news is that what they've done is completely illegal and um, it has been done by stealth and we need to stand up for our rights. So just because this has happened, it doesn't mean that we need to surrender or submit to it. Um, I'm not suggesting that, but I just do want to explain what's going on. And um, yeah, so hopefully it's a help for everybody. Does this transition, what you're referring to, does this go above and beyond simply the coronavirus, which is, of course, the biggest news story in 10 or 20 years, if not longer? Yeah. We are hearing about it constantly, yeah. all day, every day. The things you're referring to now, is it, as I said, above and beyond coronavirus, or it does it pertain or link in directly to the coronavirus? Um, coronavirus... I'm going to explain what the novel coronavirus is. All of these things are code and they're actually a spell. Uh, this is divination that's being used. So these words are all very significant. And um, as we know from the rhinofulmic research so far, um, all the evidence that he's compiled from everywhere has failed to um, provide substantial evidence for a genuine pandemic. And um, his conclusion is that it is in fact a transfer of power, which is what all of this information that I've been sharing um, has been alerting people to. And so I want to go and explain how the words that are being used are highly significant. Does, yeah. this, does this mean that the coronavirus as, as a disease, as an illness, as a virus, as a risk, as a threat, is it really a smokescreen for something else? A hidden agenda being 
operated, manipulated by a hidden hand. Yes, yes. I, um, I think that's really well put. Um, the way that I would um, describe it is that it's the understory of the cover story. So the cover story is COVID-19, um, you know, coronavirus, um, but there, there is an understory to this. So this is the, the narrative. They've rolled out a narrative and everybody has to stick by that narrative. If they don't go by the narrative, they're in trouble. But what I want to do is decode um, because the narrative is a code, it's, it's a spin, it's propaganda, but it's even more than that. It's actually, um, it's I would say it's divination and the, the names and the dates and the places all of these things are highly significant. Um, so there's many layers to it. Of course, there's uh, virologists and there's doctors and there's many scientists and people who are um, sharing that, that level of things. I, what I want to point out is that the power that has taken control uh, is the Vatican and Vatican, the word Vatican in Latin, Vati means divining and Khan means serpent and so what the power that we're dealing with is the divining serpent and so they don't come out and communicate openly about what they're doing. Um, th this is uh, being communicated in code and so therefore what I'm doing with News Decoder is decoding um, the communication so that we can understand what's going on. When you mention the Vatican, are you saying that they are the ones that have a controlling hand in this? Are you portraying them in a negative light or a positive light? Obviously the Catholic Church is huge billions of followers, billions of devotees. Mm. What specifically are you saying is the Vatican's role in all of this? Okay. Um, I'm not going to, I don't want to, um, I just want to talk about the hard geopolitical facts. Um, so, the, it's very hard to know where to start on this it's a very very big topic but they have been planning for hundreds of years to regain the power that they lost back in 1798 when the Pope was taken cap captive <clears throat> and um, they've used many agencies and, and mediums which is something that I've been researching for many years uh, the United Nations for example is one of their instruments of power and according to Avro Manhattan a Vatican uh, researcher and expert he says that the Vatican created and controls the United Nations and so we can just look at the United Nations as a very um, public very um, prominent aspect of their power so, um, and, and it is a vehicle to bring in their world government. So the United Nations, uh, the whole concept of the group of nations all gathering together to make decisions, this whole concept is being replicated in the religious world where they've created a world parliament of religions, they've created a world government sorry, a World Parliament of Religions and a United Religions organisation patent on the United Nations. So um, just to give you a bit of an idea of the, of the kind of platforms and the agencies through, through which they're working. They also have um, agencies such as the Jesuits who are well known for their work of infiltration and taking over governments and taking over organisations and systems and religions. And so they're very, very prominent in all of this. Well, I think you've explained, on, at least on the surface, yeah. we will we'll delve deeper into the topic, but mm. what you've explained there is quite concise, that there is a transition of power going mm. on. Mm. Uh, you've got the United Nations. When you get everything unified, you lose your sovereignty. Yes. This is, what, this is an, an overall agenda, and it's not just happening politically. It may not just be happening in religion, it could also be happening in terms of economics around the world. Yeah, that's right, it, and it's happening. Um, there are specific agencies that it is happening through, which I will talk about, and I'll talk about the way that the power transitioned, the, the very date that it happened, how it happened, and um, because we want to break this down. Um, I don't have all the, the knowledge on this, like, you know, it's, it's so huge, but I'll share the little bit that I do know and hopefully it will add to the volume of knowledge that people are gathering. 
Okay, well, that's been a very excellent introduction. For the listeners and viewers, we are going to expand on this topic. This is just a brief overview to let you know what we will be reporting on next. So we will, uh, we will cut here and we will move on to uh, do a more in-depth examination step by step. Okay.